New York Mets yesterday hosted the Houston Astros, who, by the way, have been in New York for like a decade. Not really, but they've been here for like 10 days. 10 days away from home, living out of their bags, you know, recycling underwear. Maybe they washed it. Maybe they gave it to the equipment guys so they could wash their clothes. But they're wearing the same stuff for 10 days. They cannot be comfortable living in a hotel, sleeping on a a bad bed. I mean, they're probably not. They're probably in the Waldorf or something. But you know what I mean. They're not sleeping in their own bed. They haven't had a good home night rest in 10 days. And they come out and they two hit, two hit the New York Mets. The Mets, who are the best team in the National League, the Mets who have found ways to win in so many different ways throughout this season, whether it's small ball or Alonzo mashing or Lindor having all those RBIs. We didn't have any yesterday. Neither did Pete Alonzo. Neither did nobody. Shut out by the Houston Astros. Yeah, I know it was Justin Verlander. and He hit his 2.03 ERA. But still, it's the Mets. And the Mets are different now. They're not the same old Mets. They get two hit. I'm all in on what Hoff is all in on it. They got to bring up Alvarez. They got to bring up some reinforcements, even if it's an experimental reinforcement. Someone who can ignite this offense or ignite this team or who can be a catalyst for something different against the AA teams in, in Major League Baseball. The Mets are sub-A, like we talked about yesterday, but that's not a bad thing. It's just a thing, thing that they, something that they can correct. We know Stevie Cohen, he wants to do it. He said that he'll do it. Whatever it's going to take at the deadline, we're going to do. He and Billy Billy Epper are going to smash their heads together, and they're going to find the best guys to bring in here. Well, one of them might be in their farm system. Francisco Alvarez, by the way, hit another home run last night. Another one. It's 19 in the minors right now. Oh, and by the way, he caught Max Scherzer last night in his in his rehab start. So we know with the seal of approval what the battery mate is there. He's mashing. He doesn't have to play catcher because you got one here. McCann already got two actually with Nito, but he can be your DH. He can give you that needed potential bat that the Mets need in their lineup. So I'm all in on the Mets having to do something now. Stop waiting. Let's stop looking at the all-star break and figuring out who's going to go. Yeah, Pete's going to go, and uh, yeah, maybe Lindor is going to go, and yeah, maybe McNeil gets in. Who knows? I mean, who cares, right? We got we to gotta worry if you're a Mets fan. You got to worry about getting right right now before everybody else gets right and, and takes all of these potential trade pieces. Uh, you need to know what trade piece you actually need. And Francisco Alvarez is a guy who I think can come up and make an impact. And by the way, if he doesn't, you send them back down, and then you go to plan B. But plan A will be work on what you got. Two hit they were yesterday. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. No a body. I'm all in on that. Hoff, great job. Great job holding it down. I know I apologize for being late. I'm sorry, peeps, that I kept you hanging. But Hoff carried the mail. Thank you, man. You can walk for the rest of the day. My football coach when I was Little League, Mike Tolley, he used to call my national show all the time. He used to say, nobody walks around here but Coach Mike and the mailman. Well, Hoff, you carried a load that you didn't weren't prepared to at the beginning of the morning. You prepared yourself in the hour that you had to get ready, and you carried the mail so you can walk today. You can chill. You can have a siesta and have a beverage on me at some point. As you say, I appreciate you. you well, I appreciate you. It's the most important th- words to say to people in life. Will, up in Milford, Connecticut. Welcome to the fan, Will. What's up? Well, Tiki, I first want to say it's a pleasure to speak with you. Pleasure Likewise. to speak with you. Likewise. All right. Well, I wanted to say something, and again, nothing against what you're saying, but I think the Mets are now sub-A because we don't have Scherzer and DeGrom. That's, of course I think they that do. Make- but we get, you yeah. still got a hit. They got two hits yeah. yesterday, man. I understand, but but... Uh, in, in, in going in a contrast to the Yankees, and just recently, they were, except for uh, you know a few hits, they were no hit too. And I think they're going to reach that in the playoffs. They're, they're going to be <laughs> touche. They're, they're going to be <laughs> facing. Touche, they're gonna be facing re- <laughs> yeah, they're going to be facing the likes like Houston, and you know what? Uh, you know, and, and they can get no hit too. And I, I know the Mets were no hit yesterday, but we don't have our. We don't have a you, we're we're sub A. Yeah. Like you said. You, you can't you we're can't sub-A. combat it with your aces. You can't have a pitching duel. Uh and no. by, and and to your point, the Yankees actually have to worry about the Houston Astros in the postseason. The Mets don't That's have to right. worry about them until they until they potentially until, the very end. until yeah, they get right. to the very end. That's a good point, Will. But, 
A pleasure to speak with you. Likewise, Will. Thank you, man. I appreciate you calling. (laughs) That's funny. He's funny. That's what that's what I get for being so loud and 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 maybe obnoxious against the Mets. Well, the Mets, yeah, but so the Yankees got no hit too, and they actually have to worry about them. Let's get to Tom and Forest Hills. Tom, welcome to the fan. What's up, dude? Hey there, guys. Great to talk to you. Likewise, um, man. I have two points to make, but in reference to Judge winding up on the Mets, I have a new take on this. Okay. Look, I think, I think sticking it to the Yankees and their fans is a total Mets fantasy. But it's not realistic. I mean, Judge might want to stick it to the organization, right? Yes. But he's not going to stick it to the fans. If he chooses the Mets, the wrath of the Yankee fans in this city will be unbelievable. And it won't be just directed at Steinbrenner. It's going to be a long-time distraction. He prefers the West Coast. And if he doesn't resign, that's where he's going. Yeah. No, I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. It'll make too many hurt, hurtful memories here. Yeah. And he'll want to get. No, you're right, and 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 it bleeds over. You know what I mean? The Met fan, the Yankee fan, it bleeds over. Like Met fans, and, and they get Aaron Judge, and they're going to call the show and talk about how excited they are to have Aaron Judge. It's not like Yankee fans are going to say are going to now ignore Aaron Judge, right? It's going to be so much like vileness towards Aaron Judge if he should go to the New York Mets. If he goes to the San Francisco Giants, it'll just be one of those things that we lament and we 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 get on the Yankees management for not handling the situation right. You know what I mean? So you're no, you're right. If he comes to the Mets, it might it might skew negative towards Judge simply because he's slapping Yankee fan right in the face. I think it'll be a nightmare. Yeah. I have another point to make also, just one thing. Go ahead, Tom. I mean the Yankees thank you so much. The, the, the Yankees are still living and dying by the home run. And when you've got all these low batting average, that's why you almost get no hit. I mean, Judge is a real MVP because technically most of the time, if he doesn't like perform, they don't even win men. Yeah, well, I mean, they can win. But I said this a couple weeks ago, Tom, and appreciate your call. A, a, a couple weeks ago, people kind of scratch their head, like, "What are you talking about? They, this team is they've, they're thirty-two games over five hundred. They're twenty-eight games over five hundred. Now they're how many? Thirty-six games over five. Thirty-five games over five hundred. They are right now. Uh, but I said when the, when Aaron Judge doesn't hit, not. Like when he like when he literally doesn't get a hit, the Yankees have trouble scoring. Now they still win some of those games, and some of them they scored a bunch of runs in. But but a lot, but most of them, when he doesn't hit, they don't score. And against bad teams, you can get away with that. Against good teams, there's no way you're getting away with that. And that that's the flaw that that. that it's not glaring. It's not like huge because again, they're thirty six games over five hundred. But it is the it is the little thing that worries you about this Yankees team. As good as they are, as good as their pitching staff has been, as good as their bullpen has been, as great as Aaron Judge has been, the one little thing you worry about and you can't help but worry about is that when Aaron Judge isn't your guy, when he's not you know lighting the fire. By getting hits and getting on base and, and driving in RBIs or hitting home runs, they don't score. And it's that's got to be worrisome. 877-337-6666. And just about, let's see, 10 minutes. We're going to have our Yankees box office blitz, your chance to get some tickets. So be listening in 10 minutes. You know what caller you need to be, too, at that time. That would be number seven. Corey. In Manalapan, New Jersey. What's up, Corey? Welcome to the fan. Thank you. Thanks for taking my call. Pleasure, um, Corey. Let me just start out by saying that I'm a big Yankee fan, and I listen all the time, and I listen to all to Yankee fans and Met fans. And Met fans complain about the Yankees, and I complain about the Mets. But to be honest <laughs> with you, the only thing that I'm really worried about, and I'm not worried about any other team, I'm worried about the Yankees. Why? And I'll say this, and I'll tell you why I say this. I look at their rotation, and it's been great so far. How could you say that it's not been great? Yep. But these these pitches haven't really pitched a lot. If you look at it, Severino's been gone for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, Kayon, he's been hurt, and and listen, and Nesta Cortez, you know, you know, he's gonna be on a pitch count. So, and let me just throw this in. Listen, I I want Gallo gone. I want. <laughs> something else in here. Yeah, there's no, I mean, we can't make any more excuses for Gallo. Up. Yeah, we can't so make any I more excuses for him. I think that Brian Cashman has a big job to do. I don't think it's a small job. I think he has to get a little bit more pitching. I really believe that. And I, even though we have people coming back 
but we need another star or two. Yeah. And we need another out and another hitter. Yeah, another we need outfielder. Somebody else, well, like you said. Yeah, that's why we talked about in and uh, uh, and Benintendi. Um, yesterday, um, who is Andrew Benintendi? Who has just been he's 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 useless right now on in in Kansas City. And so, if he was able to come balance out this Yankees hitting attack, because he's not just a home run hitter. I mean, he can he'll hit him every now and then. And thank you for calling, Corey. Appreciate it. Um, it's it's less about that. It's more about balancing out this this the the uh, the batting order with a guy who can get on base and steal bases and. Even more importantly, maybe play corner outfield. He's traditionally a left fielder. I think Pete told me that yesterday. I think he's traditionally a left fielder, but he, he can also play right. You can put him in a corner wherever you need him, but he's going to be able to get hits for you. And sometimes you just need hits. You guys on base, you just need hits. You don't need necessarily home runs. Let's get John in Brooklyn. What's up, John? Welcome to the fan. Hey, Tiki. Good thing you made it in. I know. Um, I, I, as a Mets fan, I'm not worried about the Yankees. I'm not even worried about Atlanta. I'm worried about the Mets. Because okay. they're going to be their only Achilles heel, man. They, yeah. Right now they got Alvarez down there raking, and we all need that bat. And, and it's like they don't want to call him up. Yeah. You know, I, we I, get... it's, it's almost like curiosity with him right now for us. We just want to see him. Let's just yeah, let, let us know. If he can't do it, like... send him back. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, yeah, we we might get shows. I don't know if you watched the game yesterday, but Matt, Max and him, you know, they 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 linked up. They were very good. Yes, and I'm just, yes. I'm very much in saying, okay, okay, we got Scherzer, we got Tyler, we got Bassett in the playoffs. That's going to be a three. Jacob Degrom could be a, eh, yeah. If we need him, we don't, we don't need him. I'm yeah. not really concerned about that. But that bullpen, you're right. It, it, it's a, it's six innings and it, baseball's a long game. You need somebody to get to Diaz. Yes, because we ain't got nobody to get to Diaz. No, and well, well there are guys that can do it. Like Adovino, he, he's there sometimes, but then, it, but he worries you a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But well, I, I also feel like Steve Cohen is trying to give the guys, you know, some type of strength. But I think he's gonna. Because he's a fan. Let's not forget he's a fan of the game. I think he's going to say, you know what, I'm tired. Good point. I want this and I want that done. And once he gets tired, it's going to change. Yeah. And I think he's getting to that point. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you make a, we, we brought that up the other day. I mean, it was last week, uh, John, and appreciate your call, about Max Scherzer giving uh, Francisco Alvarez the basically the thumbs up. Like, he gave him the okay to be be his catcher. And then he's caught him a couple of times. And and so that's that's encouraging because they work well together. But if he when when Max Scherzer comes back, and you know you you have Chris Bassett who's there as well, uh, Taiwan Walker uh, is it will be there, and then if Jacob Degrom gets healthy, you you almost feel like all right, that's the rotation we need to get deep. But if Jacob Degrom is not available, this is where the trade deadline move has to happen because you have to be able to push. The guys like uh, Tyler McGill, when he does come back, he's on the sixty day, so it's a long time. But you keep, you keep him as a, as a as a as a middle or a long reliever, right? You keep him in the bullpen. Uh, David Peterson, who has been pretty good in, in spot starting, he also then slots back into your bullpen. Uh, as does Trevor Williams. So you have like this this these these now forced to you know be starter guys who can pull themselves back into the bullpen. It strengthens your bullpen. It gives you some length if you need it. Uh, if you've got someone who gets knocked around earlier. Uh, but more importantly, it's it, it it fills you out. Like instead of feeling like you're pushing everybody forward, you're actually pulling guys back, which makes it feel a lot more comfortable, you know, come those critical times. Uh, Hoff just told me some um, good news, I think it is. Good news on Jacob deGrom. There is a chance... A chance, maybe a slight one, but there is a chance that Jacob DeGrom could be in line for a rehab start this Sunday? Or yeah, this Sunday. This Sunday night. So the night before the 4th of July, just keep your ears open. Jacob DeGrom may be making a rehab start. Finally, we're getting some news on the former two-time Cy Young winner.